Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Hi, it's been a long time since I've been on YouTube, but uh, I want to do a quick video. This I'm, I have some other things I want to talk about, but I wanted to do a quick video um, in regards to uh, Paul Bigley was giving a report on a the pastors who um, kicked a member of their church out for wanting to talk about Pastor Abedini, who is in uh, imprisoned in. Uh, I think it's Iran or Iraq. I think it's Iran uh, right now and being held prisoner there and tortured. Um, that uh, is something that needed to be addressed. I, I felt needed to be addressed in the spirit. Um, they, the, the pastors didn't want to talk about what was happening in the other parts of the world for um, that's happening to the saints. I, I believe that the Lord is telling me that I needed to address it because it is something we shouldn't forget. We need to be remembering these people, uh, our brothers and sisters in these areas who are being tortured and imprisoned. Um, it is a testimony to their faith that they are able to stand. Our prayers help them to stand. We need to be praying for them. We should be addressing the issue. And in fact, I will. I have Bible verses for that. So those pastors who believe and those churches that believe they shouldn't be speaking about these things, um, we should be remembering them. We should be upholding them in prayer. Um, there are people who are going to be tested in their faith. Um, it may be you. <laughs> it may be me. Uh, we are all tested in different ways. We are all called to stand for the faith in some way, and I will prove that as well. Um, I want to go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews is the book of faith. Let me read the book of, faith, of Hebrews. And it, the testimonies that are, are given there about uh, Moses and Abraham and Sarah and all these people have a testimony of faith. Uh, I wanted to read, first of all, uh, Hebrews 4. Was it? Oh, I'm just remembering if I do want to read that. It was actually for something else. No, I wanted to read Hebrews 11. That's where I wanted to go. Now, Hebrews 11 is a dissertation basically of all the um, people, Joseph and Moses and, and Jacob and all these people who had expressed their faith in certain different sort of ways. And the Lord is telling us in this, this passage in scripture that we are all given tests of faith. And I want to just uh, read just a small portion because I don't want this video to be too long. Um, starting at verse 32. And what more shall I, what more Excuse me, what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak, Gideon and of Barak and of Samson, of, of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness was made strong, waxed valiant in fight turned to flight the army, armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they may obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials of cruel mocking and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in desert, deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these, all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So what he's saying here is that there are different tests of faith for different people. Um, not all will be tortured, not all will be killed, not all will be imprisoned. Some people are called to be the valiant warriors. Some people are meant to stand on the front lines and keep keep the lion's mouth shut, like Daniel. We are all called to different different types of demonstration of faith. Um, we are supposed to talk about those people because uh, who are imprisoned and tortured because they are demonstrating their faith, and it's a testimony to us who are not being t tormented in these sort of ways. It's a testimony to us to stand strong and also to pray for them that they endure their tr their temptations and their trials, and to realize that we're in a spiritual battle. We're in a battle, people. 
Satan is real, and these people are demonstrating the goodness and the greatness of our God, that they have the strength and the courage to see their children killed in front of them, to, to lose their homes and everything that they thought they held dear, dear, to only find out that the faith is greater and stronger than all these worldly possessions. That is a testimony to us, and we should be talking about it. And in fact, I want to read Hebrews 13 in closing to this, because I don't want this to be too long. Hebrews 13, um, and I want to go to verse 3. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for they by some have entertained angels unaware. Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them that suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. So we are supposed to remember these people and pray for them. That's what it says here. To not to forget them, to remember them that are bound, uh, bound as though you were bound with them. So if you you're imprisoned with these people because they're part of the body, they're part of they're part of the body of Christ, and you are part of the body of Christ. If a toe hurts, your your whole body hurts. If a finger hurts, your whole body hurts. You your finger, you're not you don't cut a finger and you go, oh look, my finger's cut. I cut my finger. Oh look at that. And the finger is the only thing that hurts. Your whole body hurts when you cut a finger. So we're supposed to remember that these people who are imprisoned and being tortured in prayer and support them. And and this is the way we are supposed to be tested in our faith. So those who are those pastors and those churches and those um, people who say we shouldn't be speaking about these things, we don't want to worry about the ch worry the church on these matters, you're wrong. You need to repent and start praying for these people and start um, acknowledging their great acts of faith. Uh, you know, these are great acts of faith and they will be remembered and written down in heaven and they will be sung about for for all of eternity, okay? So I think that's all I want to say on the subject. God bless.